So I've lived in Canada for a while and I've noticed over the years you'll meet a lot of people who say something about how they lived in Montreal back in the day. They'd often say they really enjoyed living in Montreal, they love the city and they have all these fond memories. They say, oh yeah, I will visit you, show you where I used to hang out, blah blah blah. But the reason that they didn't stay boils down to them believing that they couldn't reach their full potential in Montreal. They were going to have to fuck off to Toronto or something. Well, I thought that's not good enough and we need to do something about this. Surely our drastically improved economy and all these other things has changed the equation. So I set about trying to solve this problem. How are we going to figure out whether Montreal is a place where you can achieve your full potential as an anglophone? I blew the dust off my management books from when I was back in university and remembered Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I never wanted to be the sort of person who invoked Maslow's hierarchy of needs for anything ever in my life after I was introduced to it the first time. But the Honest to God truth is it's a pretty good measure of whether someone is reaching their full potential and if they're not, what's stopping them? It takes the form of a pyramid where the things that are at the bottom need to be dealt with and addressed before the things at the next stage. It's kind of like building a house, you know, you have to have the foundations in place before you put down the floor, before you put up the walls, before you put on the roof. So in doing these comparisons, I'm going to be talking about other Canadian cities. So the big six are Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, and now Ottawa, which just recently passed a million people. Welcome to the club, Ottawa. Here is your complimentary light rail line. An apology to our customers that experienced a delay this morning. So let's get started with the first level. So level one takes care of physiological needs. When Maslow first came up with his hierarchy, it was the 1940s. At this point in time, Europe was actually the place that was producing most of the world's refugees. Fundamentals really were not being taken care of anywhere. So at the first level, we're talking about air and, and food and water. Montreal, as an anglophone, has you covered for all of the things that are on the first level of the hierarchy. In fact, you're covered here even if you don't speak English or French. The population isn't going to let you starve to death. If you know anyone in town, they're very likely to give you a hand. So I really wouldn't worry about the first level. If you're a person who's watching a YouTube video on whether you'd like to live in Montreal maybe, you're probably not the sort of person that uh, <laughs> the first level of hierarchy of needs is concerned with. Level two is the big level for people in modern society and people looking at moving to Montreal as an anglophone. Healthcare in Quebec, for an anglophone, it's the same as a francophone. Absolutely fucking god awful. You'll find yourself uh, having to go to the hospital for uh, a sprain, even though you should be able to go to a local clinic because there's absolutely no family doctors that are available. The healthcare system here is probably the worst of um, all the provinces in Canada. But having said that, if you got in a car crash or you suddenly came down with uh, cancer, the healthcare system's gonna take care of you. It's actually more of the day-to-day -day before you're super sick that blows in Quebec. So Montreal's pretty middle of the road as far as safety. According to the 2018 crime statistics, it goes Montreal, yay, and then Ottawa, which because of all the politicians is tough on crime. Two sorts of employment that you can realistically get as a monolingual anglophone. When the colorful locals decided to start murdering diplomats and the province didn't industrialized in the 70s. We are going to organize ourselves intelligently, we're going to choose our own positions, and we shall overcome. But the Canadian army is already moving into Quebec. The Montreal and Quebec governments formally request that Ottawa take urgent action. At 4 a.m. that morning, Trudeau's government invokes the War Measures Act. So in the ashes of that economic destruction, due to some pretty sensible government policy, they uh, established these new industries. So one of the big ones is the gaming industry. There's huge studios here from almost all of the major game makers. The largest uh, at this point is Ubisoft, which has about 3,500 people. They pay really well. They have support for moving family members here, for teaching people French, and they employ a wide variety of creative skills. Everything from animation and graphic design to communication, management. The video game industry is a huge industry, and Montreal's really trying to make itself the mecca for this. The other fresh growth industries are the AI industry, which is kind of the next version of the games industry. It's another industry that's being cultivated by the government and the universities in town. There's a whole block of these companies uh, near Little Italy, and I thought it was interesting when I went to visit the other day, I found one of those little libraries on the side of the road and had a look at all the books in it. And unlike the library that's in my neighborhood, Literally every single book in there was English. Another category of a new growth businesses are kind of startups and growing businesses that have started to target international and Canadian wide markets. 
So that's things like you know, David's Tea or uh, Aldo of a shoe company. Cirque du Soleil would be another one. Uh, Dollarama, Data Candy. One hour later. Another industry which has become quite successful, although you seldom see uh, politicians at ribbon cutting ceremonies, is the pornography industry. Obviously, this industry employs almost the same people as the video game industry, plus um, <clears throat> dancers. What makes you want to come work for a company now? Well, the second sort of job uh, which you can get is basically uh, immigrant jobs, working in a kitchen or labor or something that doesn't have a lot of communication, maybe logistics, driving trucks, delivering packages, um, pest control. There's probably like a million jobs that would fit that description of a province. Another thing on this level is resources and property. When you look at Montreal versus the other big six cities, we're cheap. We're a lot cheaper um, and have a lower cost of living than pretty much all of them. Even with the recent increases in rent in Montreal, we've still got a long way to go. Food in Montreal isn't really that much cheaper than anywhere else because, you know, supermarkets are everywhere and these sorts of distribution networks are pretty efficient. It mainly comes down to rent. Rent is cheap. Even on really shitty indexes, like the cost of living index that Mercer put out, you'll see that Montreal is low. The cost of living for a family is lower as well. There's lots of government support. If you're on the fence about coming to Montreal and then you decided, oh yeah, I would like to have a kid, it suddenly makes moving here a lot more compelling. It's not just the fact that the kid's gonna learn two languages. You've also got these big savings. So you have that job and you're an Anglophone, what can you actually get with it? So no matter how you slice it, Montreal is a low paid place relative to other big six cities. It's pretty much always right at the bottom. The modifiers on that are the job that you have. The video game industry here is uh, paying really, really well and uh, at levels that are similar to anywhere else in the country. So awesome deal if you have one of those jobs. A big modifier is the language that you speak you can do a lot to increase your salary by improving your level of French. So now we have the income that you can expect to get and what the cost of things are, we can work out purchasing power, which is really what this is all about. The resources, the property that you can have with the job that you have. Purchasing power expresses money's value by defining the amount of goods and services it can buy. If there's a guy in Toronto and he uh, earns this big salary, but then he has to spend it on these really expensive uh, Toronto Raptors tickets, whereas a business person working in Montreal would be able to get a real bargain at an Alouette's game. So with purchasing power, with our big six cities, there is the group that have a really high purchasing power, Calgary, Edmonton and Ottawa, and then there's the rest. If you're a disciplined saver and you want to retire early, make some money and then maybe move somewhere else, then Edmonton's a great option for you. If you're the sort of person who's deciding between the big cosmopolitan centers, you're gonna be at about the same level as your compatriots in Toronto or Vancouver. So in summary, for safety, provided you have the right qualifications or are prepared to spend a couple of years doing a job that's maybe not quite your dream job, but enough to get your foot in the door, then Montreal's a great fit. However, at this level, things start to get a little bit easier if you're willing to learn French. Bilingualism pays, and you're gonna experience a lot more employment and property and resource safety if you are able to speak French, even a little. So at level three, we're talking about love and belonging. Things start to get challenging. As an Anglophone, you encounter more resistance uh, requiring you to speak French. And for me, I find love hard to quantify and there's not enough research on it. I've heard that love is nice. Please show me what love is by loving this video. Absolutely, as an Anglophone, you can forge friendships. Would you like to be my friend? Sure, I like you a lot. I want to be your best friend and much more. Maybe not the much more part, but the friends part. There's something like 600,000 Anglophones in town, so plenty of friends. You can live in Anglophone neighborhoods where you walk into a local shop and they might even greet you in English and you'll feel like um, you belong and you won't have awkward interactions in French every day, but your choices are gonna be limited. When you wanna do things that are a little bit off the beaten path, you'll find that there isn't an English speaking option. So an example would be, it's fine for you to play hockey and you can probably be on an English speaking hockey team in a fairly English speaking hockey league, but you're gonna have a lot of trouble if you wanted to play underwater hockey. Yes, it exists where there's only two teams in town and most of the players are gonna be speaking French because most of the town speaks French. To me, it seems like you'd have a fairly suboptimal sense of belonging if you feel like you just kind of belong here and there and don't belong in the entire city. There's a piece of research that shows that two thirds of Montreal's Anglophones feel that they're primarily Montrealers and not Quebecers. 
There's obvious reason for this. Look around, you see lots of English named places. A lot of people don't realize this, but the Anglophones were actually in a majority here back in the early days of Montreal and it transitioned across to being a French speaking town. So the Anglophone community here does have deep roots and it does help to foster that sense of being a Montreal at first. When it comes to family, Obviously, if you moved here in the first place, you probably don't have your immediate family. I'm actually kind of lucky in that regard because my brother uh, lives upstairs and plays the drums. If you do find yourself uh, dating someone in town, um, I found that people here are super warm and super welcoming, even if they don't speak your language as a first language. These days, it does seem like people are kind of cool with the idea of having like one partner in um, French, one partner in English and, and think, oh yeah, that's a good thing. The kid's going to be uh, awesome at both these languages. So of all the provinces in Canada, Quebec actually has the highest level of happiness. When researchers try to understand what that happiness is caused by, there's lots of different factors, but one of them is a sense of belonging. There's this strong sense of like Quebec is a nation and we're a people and we're united in this thing. To actually experience that level of happiness and community, you want to be able to um, join in on that. You know. So with love and belonging, you can do very well in the Anglophone community and love knows no bounds, but you're going to feel a much greater sense of belonging if you're connecting with the 75% of people who aren't speaking English as a primary language. Self-esteem has respect, status, recognition, and strength. Honestly, I kind of think these things are all very, very much uh, hand in hand. If you started a job as an Anglophone, I think that it's very, very easy to prove yourself professionally as being good at what you do, even if you have a bit of trouble communicating with people. I personally found that it wasn't hard for me to get the respect and status that I wanted in my job. Language starts to kind of drop away a little bit when it comes to actually doing the work. The government is also very generous here in providing uh, training and money to employers to help improve your level of French. They would provide food and a tutor that would come in twice a week and teach you French. I used to speak French on Fridays as a way to improve it. Basically all of my French was learnt inside those walls. The people that you work with will almost universally enjoy the little side project of watching you falling on your face. Even when it's not fun for you, it's somewhat fun for them. Just a little anecdote, a colleague asked me how my weekend went and I said spectac and they said cow spectac and I thought that spectac meant spectacular but spectac means show so I said my weekend went show. We laughed about it, we still laugh about it. So the workplace is okay, but recognition in Montreal and Quebec, that's hard. This is a society that is promoting French actively. They don't really want you to be speaking in English a whole lot. You're gonna find it hard to get a lot of support and respect from entities. Even if you're running for public office in an Anglophone neighborhood, they're still gonna expect that you speak French so you can go represent them and not be constantly confused. Afin de permettre à vos proches et à nous tous un jour d'avoir le droit de mourir dans la dignité, promettez-vous aux électeurs, oui ou non? <clears throat> Spectac. I've noticed that a few of my friends who are trying to work as contractors here are also finding it difficult because it's like you're constantly having to sell yourself in a language which you're not very good at. When it comes to getting your self-esteem appeased on a worldwide scale, you can live and work in Montreal and sell your wares pretty successfully. So there's a huge art scene here that produce content here and then sell it internationally. Look at this Wikipedia article I've pasted into a title. They take advantage of a lower cost of living. They're recognized and globally successful for what they do. So with self-esteem, you can get respect and status inside a workplace, but one form of recognition you probably want to aim for is your willingness to learn and take in French culture. That's what's going to get you respect and status on the actual provincial-wide or city-wide scale. All right, Anglos, top of the pyramid, self-actualization. You can achieve your full potential if you have a Dr. Pepper. Self-actualization is where Maslow got a little kind of mushy with the details. Hey, here's the deal. When life gives you lemons, just say fuck the lemons and bail. Yeah, no, you said it. You're not worrying about where your next meal is and uh, if you're gonna get the next promotion, but instead thinking about achieving your full potential and doing the things that you've always wanted to do. Start that business, change that person's life. If you want to do it in Montreal, they are going to be really, really hard if you just speak one language. So can you achieve your full potential in Montreal if you are um, a monolingual Anglophone? No. The reality is that the first few levels of the pyramid, you can go quite a long way um, speaking just one language. But once you get to especially the 
final self-actualization, full potential achievement level, it becomes pretty obvious that you can't be all that you can be living in a bilingual society if you only speak one language. The same would go for the French speakers living in Montreal, to be honest. You don't even need to speak English or French if you want to take care of level one, but by the time you get to level five, you have to be able to communicate with most of the people in town fairly effectively. Chances are that if you started off climbing the hierarchy as an Anglophone, the person who arrives at that top level and has reached their full potential is now bilingual. So good luck.